All right, this is an example problem. We have a rocket, fireworks rocket, and it is moving at 45 meters per second when it suddenly explodes into two pieces of equal mass, so m and m, and this piece has some velocity after the explosion, and that piece has some velocity after the explosion. All right, in those directions. So, we're going to look at this problem considering this as a collision, a inverted collision, and conservation of momentum. Now, a couple things we want to keep in mind. We know that for conservation of momentum, that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And momentum is a vector. And we see that this rocket is moving in two dimensions. So we need to break up our vector into those two dimensions. Now, typically, we think about horizontal and vertical dimensions. Can I position this rocket? So I think in the horizontal and vertical dimension. I sort of have to tilt my head. And I can consider an axis coordinate system that looks like this, where there's my horizontal and there's my vertical. So now it's moving in the horizontal direction initially. It splits and moves in both the horizontal and vertical directions. This is a very bad angle 60 degrees. I'm just going to change that so it looks more appropriate. There. Still not great, but at least it doesn't look like 90. All right, so if we're going to do that, we want to separate our conservation into the conservation of momentum idea for a horizontal direction. So the momentum horizontal of the system has to be conserved oops, through the time and the vertical dimension where the momentum of the system vertically has to also be conserved. All right, well, when we think about conservation, we think about initial conditions and final conditions. And now we're going to have to think about what's happening initially, horizontal and vertically, and what's happening uh, final, both horizontal and vertical. Well, initially, the object's only moving in the horizontal direction. If I think about these two pieces, I still have the system of these two pieces, mass one, has a mass of m, and mass 2, the other piece, also has a mass, mass, mass of m. The initial horizontal velocity for mass 1, well, that piece of, I'm going to put those my two pieces, is moving at 45, and the initial horizontal velocity of mass 2 is moving at 45. Nothing is happening vertically, 0. In the final dimension, well, both m1 and m2 are again equal. We'll call that m. Both horizontally and vertical, it doesn't change. The, init, the final, excuse me, vertical, horizontal velocity for mass 1, well, that's the horizontal component of that piece. So v final 1, which we've defined as v final, times the cosine of 30. And the final horizontal velocity for mass 2 is the component of velocity 2, which is the cosine of 60. Now, it's important, since I'm using sort of convenient angles, that I pay attention to directions explicitly. Both of them are still pointing in the positive horizontal direction, so they are both positive. In the vertical dimension, the final vertical velocity for mass 1 is equal to its velocity times the sine of 30, the component and the final vertical velocity for mass 2 is equal to its velocity times the sine of 60. And again, I want to think about directions. Well, mass 1 is moving in the upward direction, but mass 2 is moving in the downward direction. So I have to be careful about those directions because I'm using angles of convenience. All right, so now let's look at our conservation principle given my initial and final conditions. So just to walk you through sort of the explicit idea, the initial momentum horizontally is the momentum of mass 1 horizontally plus the momentum of mass 2 horizontal. And that's going to equal the final plus the final of 2. This is mass 1, the initial horizontal 1, plus mass 2, the initial horizontal 2. And that's going to equal mass 1, the final horizontal 1, plus mass 2, 
the final horizontal two. So mass one initially is m times 45 plus m times 45 equals m times v1 cosine of 30 plus m v2 cosine of 60. So I'm just using my conditions that we've identified. Well, I see an m in all four terms, so I can divide m out. And I end up with 90 is equal to v1 cosine of 30 plus v2 cosine of 60. Hmm, still two unknowns. So I need two equations if I'm going to solve an equation with two unknowns. So if I can't find it horizontally, I can also have my vertical conservation principle to look at. So let's shoot over to the vertical side. So we have, just to be explicit again, P1 vertical initial plus P2 vertical initial is going to equal P1 vertical final plus P2 vertical final. Well, that's M1 V initial vertical for one plus M2 V initial vertical for two is equal to M1 V final vertical for mass one plus M2 V final vertical for mass two. All right, M1 is just M. There is no initial vertical velocity for either piece because they're together. Equals M times V1 sine of 30. I'm going to make a silly mistake at this point. Plus M times V2 sine of 60. So we end up with zero. My M's cancel again. V1 sine of 30. Oops, this was a negative. See, I'm going too fast. Minus V2 sine of 60. Now I have another equation with the same two unknowns, so I could use my substitution method. That's my method of choice. So I have V2 sine of 60 is equal to V1 sine of 30. I'm going to solve for V2. V2 is equal to V1 sine of 30 over the sine of 60. And then I'm going to take that V2 and I'm going to substitute it back in this equation. And I end up with 90 is equal to V1 cosine of 30 plus V1 sine of 30 over the sine of 60 times the cosine of 60. So now I have V1 that I can solve for. So we have 90 is equal to V1 times the cosine of 30. And that is 0 0.866 V1 plus the sine of 30 times the cosine of 60 divided by the sine of 60 plus 0 0.289 V1 and we get 90 is equal to 1.155 times V1 and V1 is equal to 77.9 meters per second. Slightly different than your key. Well, no, I guess I rounded in the key or didn't round, round in the key. So this is V1. Now I can use V1 to solve for V2 and we see that V2 is 77.9 times the sine of 30 divided by the sine of 60. And that is equal to 45. All right, so the key to a problem like this is recognizing that we have a conservation of momentum situation we can use and that it's a vector and we have to separate our conservation principle into the horizontal and vertical components. Good job.